Car's getting ready to come off. Think about this. Tony Stewart is restarting 11th. Well, at the beginning of this race, he went from 14th to the lead in the first three laps of the race. When we come by, there will be six laps remaining. Hold on, because here we go. Boyer on the high side. Down low, it's Earnhardt Jr. Green flag flies. We're racing at Daytona again. Turn two, Dale Jr. has his choice. He's got Waltrip behind him, but he is right there with Boyer right now. Looks like Boyer made his decision real quick there. He pulled down right in front of Jr. Yeah, he wanted that experience. Uh, nothing against Trevor Bain. Trevor Bain got shuffled back, and he's out of the picture for the moment. And it looked like maybe Michael Waltrip got shuffled as well. There he is all alone down on the low side of the track. There goes Reed Sorensen with his help. Yeah. Landon Castle in the one right behind with Tony Stewart. Yeah, Tony Stewart's got a big push now on this one car. Let's see if they can go to the front. This time by five laps remaining here at Daytona. Let's get more on the one car, Dave. Marty, they thought if the four got up to the one, they told Landon, Landon, just let him get up there and then he won't have a choice. He'll push you. He will be your partner. Well, they have made the connection and here they come down on the low side of the track. 21 year old Landon Castle has a five time winner stuck on his rear bumper. They go past Reed Sorensen. They're catching the leaders here too. There a lot of momentum. Joe Gibbs racing duo. And then in front of them, it is Clint Boyer, followed by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Six cars right now in this freight train. This time by four laps remaining here at Daytona. Yeah, I was kind of laughing to myself as we talked about all these different scenarios during that uh, red flag period. We didn't even mention Kyle Busch and Joey Logano, but they certainly are going to be have a say-so in who's going to win this. Well, they've been there all day long. You can see right there Joey Logano trying to push Kyle Busch. They have been the best at the exchange, but I have a feeling right now nobody's going to agree to make it the exchange until we get down to the last lap. Here we go down the backstretch. And even then, I don't think they'll agree. <laughs> What's that? We're, we're teammates for 119 yeah. laps, and then we're going to go race on that last one. Okay, here come the teammates, Turner Motorsport teammates on the high side. They're trying to make it an eight car. Look out, trying to split the middle. Castle looking for a hole. On the high side, here come the Joe Gibbs teammates. Who's going to lead at this time? By it is Kyle Busch. We have our 33rd lead change. Okay, just three laps to go. They've got to make a decision now. No room unless you want to really go high, and nobody's been willing to do that up front. It's basically been side by side through all the turns. It's just a matter here. Who can stay latched on the very best? Make this two-car tandem work. Boyer and Dale Jr. push their way out, and right behind him, Castle comes along with Tony Stewart. They do make the change. Logano goes back in front of the 18. That's going to allow the 32 of Reed Sorensen, along with Jason Leffler, to come up alongside. That may have sealed the Joe Gibbs fate by having to make that switch. Two laps to go. Comes Castle and Stewart now still. They got a lot of momentum up on the top side. See if they can carry it by. Is he going to push that car by? Well, as you see, Tony Stewart duck out now. Tony makes the switch. And he we haven't seen, high. yeah, we haven't seen Castle be able to latch on and do quite as good a job when he was uh, with Brad Keselowski earlier on. They made a pretty good exchange right there, but it looks like they may get shuffled a little bit. I've got a question why they would make that change with just two laps to go. I would let it blow water out. If it got hot, so be it. I was really wondering if Tony Stewart was going to push someone else by his teammate up there with, uh, with Kevin Harvick Incorporated. Well, they've dropped back because the Joe Gibbs pair, Logano and Bush, have gotten around them. How back 10th and 11th through 12th? That's Michael Waltrip right along with Casey Kane. Then the two Fords back to the battle up front. White flag is out. Here we go. Who's going to win it at Daytona? We see Reed Sorensen. Oh, look out. Okay, look out on, into the wall. He caroms off. Everybody else gets by. He'll go back into the wall. The white flag's still out. No caution We're on the racing That into turn three. Junior's right on the bumper. Clint Boyer. Does he make history? Dale Earnhardt Jr. Or does Clint Boyer win? And here comes Tony Stewart. He's getting the push from Castle. Coming out of four. This is really going okay, to be close. Okay, here goes Jr. to the inside. Jr. to right, the inside. inside. Boyer 
Stewart takes the lead and pulls up and at the stripe. It's Boyer. Stewart. I thought it was Boyer, but Tony Stewart does it. <laughs> wow. Holy God. Oh. They're saying Boyer's the winner. That was too close to call. I thought so, too. And then the scoring monitor came up and said Stewart. It looked like Boyer had it. And NASCAR is saying it is Clint Boyer. Well, Tony Stewart Tony doesn't know that. No, now we're holding. Four. No, nope, it is okay, official. Now Tony Stewart. It is Great official. Job, buddy. Great job. Woof. Four in a row, baby. Four in a row yeah, is Tony. right. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Six out of the last seven. Tony Stewart, his 16th Daytona win. And the streak continues. He's won at least one event since 2005 during Speed Weeks. Let's go back and take another look at this, because this was oh so close. There it is. It's Tony right Stewart. at the very front. Seven one thousandths of a second. Incredible. Oh, my. Just incredible. How does he find his way there every single time? Well, you asked why he got around the, the exchange on Landon Castle. Now we know. <laughs> he said, Castle, push me, buddy. Landon Castle did a fantastic job of getting on Tony's bumper and pushing him right there. You saw, you saw Boyer try to make the block and then got back down with Junior. Woof. Well, while Tony gets turned around to start the celebration, let's check in with Vince Welch. <laughs> Bruce Cook, the crew chief for Tony Stewart. Stewart has won four in a row, but I'll tell you what, you couldn't get much closer than that. What did you think your chances were when you had to go back to 11th with nine laps to go after that flat tire? I'll tell you, he's, he's amazing, and our chances are really good. We, when the race started, we started 14th. We didn't qualify as good as we wanted to, but by that three, we were leading. So. When we, we had that problem there on pit road, and I told him, I said, hey, man, there's nine laps to go, and lap three you were leading last time, and you can't tell him nothing. He assured me everything's good. He's got plenty of laps left. So what a great job by KHI. I want to thank Nabisco and Oreo and everybody involved with this thing. It was great. My first race to come down here and do this with him is awesome. Thank you to uh, Kevin Delana, everybody at the fab shop, and everybody that's worked really hard on these cars, uh, Ernie Cope, everybody. Well done. Tony Stewart, the winner. And the salute to Dale Earnhardt Sr., the three fingers out the window of our race winner, Tony Stewart, and an oh-so-close finish. He restarted 11th with six to go and won it by seven one-thousandths of a second. Six years ago today, Tony Stewart won his first ever nationwide series race, and he has been dominant here at Daytona ever since. He has now won this race four times in a row. Hey, shouldn't you have like Clint Boyer and Landon Castle in uh, victory lane with you today? That was something else. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. That oh, was awesome. It's, uh, man, it was so scary there when we got the tire down. I thought, man, we're not only did it hurt us, I knew it was going to hurt Clint too. So. Uh, I didn't realize we had that many cars a lap down, and I thought we were going to be a lot further back on the restart. But, um, you know, our fans thank those these guys for getting down here. And Oreos and Ritz and everybody at Kevin Harvick, Inc. It's, uh, man, what a long weekend. I've been sick for three days. I feel terrible, but this is making me feel better. You and Castle teamed up there at the end and uh, made your way toward the front. Take us through that last little bit of uh, action as you guys started to make your way for the pass for the lead. Well, I mean... <laughs> That wasn't right, <laughs> but no, we had a, we, uh, we knew he had good speed and we had good speed. And the hard part was if you stayed lined up directly behind him, that's when you could run the fastest lap time. But I couldn't, I couldn't stay cool enough doing it. So I had to switch and I felt like I had, he, I think he was good enough to go ahead and win it. I just, I think they had him trapped where he couldn't, didn't feel like he had the right lane to go to. And I was confident I could get in the right spot at the right time. Now, the winning margin was point zero zero seven, and yet you came on the radio right away screaming that you'd won it. How did you know that you guys had won it when it was that slim of a margin? We're running almost 200 mile an hour. It may be point zero zero seven, but it's probably a foot or foot and a half. So uh, you just know, you, you know, after 30 years of doing this, I know. <laughs> I know you've been sick much of the week. How you feeling now? <clears throat> I still feel sick, but um, I'm going to go to the infield care center here and they'll fix me up after this. But man, I, I cannot thank Kevin and Delano Harvick and everybody at uh, KHI and, and everybody at uh, Earnhardt, 
ECI engines, man. They, this thing, the, I can tell you, if they didn't get up, Clint and I separated. We, there's no doubt we were going to win the race that way. Just didn't, we didn't know what order it was going to be in crossing the line. But I'm glad that we got them one two. Congratulations, Tony Stewart, the winner, the fourth straight year that he's won the season opener here at Daytona. Marty. 12 cars finished on the lead lap. 11 did not see the checkered flag in this race. And the man who finished fourth, the sentimental favorite, Dale Earnhardt Jr., came home in fourth in the number five car. And Dr. Jerry Punch caught up with him. Well, Santa with Dale Jr. And Jr., you said at the beginning of the race when you talked to us that uh, if you could be second on that final lap, you were in the perfect spot. Looks like you were in the perfect spot. Uh, what happened? Not quite, yeah. I need a little bit of a lead on that second group coming off of four to make my move. And when, when Tony and him were that close and kind of coming up on the outside of us, um, it makes Landon really the most loyal guy in the group. So Tony's definitely got to push her all the way across the finish line. And I should have just pushed Clint because I think I could have kept him in the lead to win. But I wanted to see what I could do, see what, you know, see what I could learn for tomorrow. And everything happened about like I thought it would. And, uh, but it was fun. And I want to thank Hellman's and GT Vodka and Tax Slayer and GoDaddy and all our sponsors. We took four. Uh, we took three cars home in a box last year, and we, we take four home in the trailers this year, so I'm pretty happy about that. What did you learn that will help you tomorrow in terms of what happens on that last lap with that upper draft? You would need to be out front on that. You know, you need to be toward the front, but, you know, it's not it's not initial to be up front all day long. Uh, and at the end, I mean, if you got to, if you got, if we're packed up there, it's good to be in that second group leading because you you got the most loyal guy behind you. He's not going to ditch you to try to finish third, you know. And the leaders are more than likely going to split, you know, go against each other like we did today, uh, or like I did. So the guy running third, leading that second group, is the best position in that situation. But if you got a lead, um, really, you can do whatever you want. Hey, good luck tomorrow. All right, thank you. Deal. Any thoughts on the